In this video, I'm going to show you how to take this image and this image and make this image. Simple cutout process. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time, and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? So in Photoshop, if you know which two images you want to combine, it's much quicker and easier if you just inbridge, select both images you want, then go up to Tools, down to Photoshop, and load files into Photoshop layers. If you get a warning dialog box that says Photoshop is busy, just click Yes. That's a bug. So it has auto-loaded the images for me. I'll hit Command-0 to kind of fill the screen. I'll turn off this layer, which ultimately I want to be in the background. So I'll go ahead and drag it to the bottom. These images were licensed by Adobe Stock. I kept the identification numbers in the layer name. So in case you wanted to go and license them in practice, you can, but these techniques will work with any of your images as well. So to select this subject, just go to the quick selection tool, click on it, and then come over to the toolbar at the top and just choose select subject. Even though this is black on black, it's going to do a good job. And then uh, once it's selected the subject, just add a layer mask. And you can see I didn't even refine the edge and it did a really good job. The reason I'm not worried about refining the edge is I know I want to put it on a dark background. So I want to put it on this background anyway. So first, let me V for the move tool. Let me move him to where I want him to be aesthetically placed. And then I can adapt my background accordingly. So it looks like I need to stretch the background. So I'll select it and hit Command or Control T. And I'll just pull from this bottom corner down until it fills the background. Click OK. I'll hit C for the crop tool. Command minus just to shrink it in my screen a bit so I can pull this up. OK, I like the direction this is going. I'll toggle off the guy in the front because I need to get rid of the model in the back. Quickest way is just to grab the lasso tool. And it doesn't need to be perfect at all and just hit Shift Delete. Once the Fill dialog box populates, just choose Content Aware and click OK. Photoshop's gonna do the bulk of the work. And again, we just really need it fixed right around this area where she was behind him. And that did a reasonable job. Command D to deselect. There's some blurry edges we may need to worry about, but let's take a look at it real quick. Okay, so what I'd probably do is, since I'm on the background layer, I'll hit S for the Clone Stamp tool. To make this work, you have to hold down the Alt or Option key and choose by clicking with that bullseye, where do you want to source from? So I click there and you see how I, it's giving me a preview of what I'm about to paste. I'll look up at my opacity. I'm at 40%. So I'll type zero just to quickly go to 100. And then I'll just paint this horizon right over a little bit. Maybe I'll type six for 60% now because I, I want it to be more a little more faded. Maybe eight for 80%. See, I'm just kind of fading that in, making sure it looks Pretty integrated. I'd say we're done. Command control zero. So now let's uh, do our color treatments and other things. So first, I think I'd like the guy to be a touch darker. So I'll toggle open my adjustments. I'll pull this up a little bit and just put a levels adjustment layer and pull it a little darker. Now remember, it's a top down orientation. So any adjustment layer you have on the top is going to affect every single image below it. Unless, let me stretch this up, you create a clipping mask, which means you're clipping the adjustment layer to the layer below. If you hold down the alt or option key, see how my cursor changes from this to this. Just hover in between the two layers and click and you get that downward pointing arrow that makes it only affect this, which is great. Now I'll compress those two images together on the same layer. Command Option Shift Letter E. I want to get rid of the, the dog's leash. I'll grab the spot healing brush for that. Command Space Bar just to zoom in and vary the brush size as needed with the left and right bracket keys. That was the right bracket key. Just make it a little bigger. Space bar so I can temporarily get the hand tool to pan down. Now remember that space bar, that's just changing the view. It's not moving the actual image on the layers. Not doing too bad at all. That one was not great. Let's redo it. I hit Command or Control Z to undo that. Remember, Adobe has AI learning. So the more passes you make on something, the more it learns what it is that you're wanting to get. And it, and it tries to keep improving that. See how I created that right there? I don't mind that little dark piece right here. Command or Control Zero to fit in the screen. Now let's add a, a subtle color treatment. Maybe I would just toggle on the color balance adjustment layer just so I can add more blue to everything. Yeah, I enjoy that. And then, then I would add a curves adjustment layer just to give it a bit more contrast. And remember, when you add a curves adjustment layer, if you put a subtle S curve into the straight line, it will give it more contrast. So usually I just click and pull down right here in the lower midtones and I'll click and pull up in the, the higher midtones and that's going to boost the contrast. And then if say I lost the dog too much, you get an, a mask automatically. So I'll just hit D to make sure I'm on default colors. I'll hit X to bring black to the foreground, right bracket key to make my brush bigger. 
hit B to make sure I'm on the brush, right bracket key to make my brush bigger. And I'll paint with like five for 50% just to bring back some of the dog. And I'll bring back a little bit of this detail over here. And maybe I'll just brighten up this little part right back here. After I've done all that, I'll hit command option, shift letter E. And I really wouldn't mind a vignette. Good way to add a vignette. Hit Command or Control J and just use Multiply, add a layer mask, grab the rectangular marquee tool and just kind of select inside there and then fill it with black. I hit, I'm on a Mac, so I hit Shift Delete to open up the fill dialog box and I'll choose black and choose OK because you automatically get this properties dialog box with any layer mask and I can just drag the feather up here. See how I can feather that edge on the fly visually, which is usually my favorite way of doing it. So this is a quick way to composite your image fairly seamlessly. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>